We're going to use the trigonometric identities to rewrite the above expression cotangent theta sine squared theta times secant squared theta as a single trig function. When you're asked to do something like this, a standard way of starting, doesn't always work, but it may work in this case, is to try to convert everything into sines and cosines using trig identities. So you need to think about what identities you already know. For example, you know that the cotangent of theta is equal to the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. That's what's known as a quotient identity. Another identity that you know is that 1 over the cosine of theta is equal to secant of theta, and that is a reciprocal identity. So if we put this all together, let's do some substitution. Instead of cotangent, I'm going to write cosine of theta over sine of theta, and that gets multiplied by sine squared, sine squared of theta, and I'm going to put that over 1 just so I keep everything aligned. That gets multiplied by secant squared of theta, but remember that secant is 1 over cosine, so I'm going to replace secant squared with 1 over cosine squared. Let's simplify. We notice that we have a sine and a sine squared, so we can simplify that. We notice we have a cosine and a cosine squared, so we can simplify. And now going across the top, we have 1 times sine times 1, so we get the sine of theta. And going across the bottom, we have 1 times 1 times the cosine of theta. And you might recognize that sine over cosine is a tangent. That is the quotient identity for tangent. And so we have rewritten this expression at the top here using identities into a single trigonometric function.